just hold your fire. Head 69, Ministry of Works and Infrastructure, 1 billion 314 million 830,000. I will now invite the Honorable Minister of Works and Infrastructure, if he so desires, to make a brief opening statement for no more than five minutes. Honorable Minister of Works and Infrastructure. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, first I'd like to, Mr. Chairman, uh, to say that how happy we are to be part of this uh, experience and this event, because we consider it the opportunity, not just for my ministry, but I may uh, say for the government to demonstrate the qualities and values of openness and transparency in terms of how it does its business as a government. Mrs. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chairman, I want to just introduce the members of my team, the key members, um, Permanent Secretary Mr. Isaac Jim, Deputy Permanent Secretary Sonia Yearwood, the Head of Pure, Mr. Hayden Phillips, the Director of Highways, Mr. Roger Ganesh, and the rest of the team who are here with me. Mr. Speaker, this has been a very exciting year and a very successful year. One may even describe it as the uh, people of the country are describing it as a record year in terms of projects and the performance of the Ministry of Works and Infrastructure, and for this, the um, people who work in the Ministry ought to be warmly congratulated. In fact, Mr. Speaker, um, we have counted 2,541 locations in Trinidad where work has been done over the last um, fiscal year um, coming up to um, this, this month of September. Mr. Speaker, please, no, as no, we listen, a member for Port of please continue, please. Mr. Speaker, as we look, look towards uh, this fiscal year, we look towards uh, opening several important projects. We have completed, as you know, the Digo Martin Highway, but we also look now to open the uh, Valencia Bypass Road, which uh, will eliminate uh, a lot of the traffic on the Valencia Junction. The new motor vehicle authority uh, building is almost complete uh, near La Pai Village, and we have now constructed a new roadway from the Carony Bridge right onto Washington Junction, which will alleviate traffic um, pile up there on mornings now that you'll have a two-way flow of, of traffic. And that is one of several projects, Mr. Speaker, which will be completed um, in this fiscal year, inclusive of uh, 13, 13 more bridges and approximately uh, 27 landslips across the country. Mr. Speaker, our uh, work for 2015 will include the continuation of the Port of Spain East-West Corridor Transportation Project, uh, the redefinition of highway reserves, of course, the extension, continuation of the extension of the Solomon Hochoy Highway from San Fernando to Point Fortin, uh, the traffic management program and the bridges and landslips program, we are going to continue with installation of cable barriers to medians of highways and roadside edges, as well as the supply and installation of New Jersey type barriers. Mr. Speaker, in order to improve what happens at uh, traffic intersections, we are going to be providing backup power supplies um, to several traffic signalized intersections, as well as continue the program we have of zebra crossings and uh, zebra crossings. The traffic warden system will be further enhanced. We are now up to about 330 traffic wardens, and we hope to continue the recruitment until we get to the cabinet approved 700. We are also paying very close attention to what is happening in the coastal regions of Trinidad and Tobago, and several coastal projects are on the card. In fact, some tenders have already been awarded, and we are going to be doing extensive work on that. The unemployment relief program, which is one of the most highly criticized program, has been turned around into a very efficient program. And uh, this year, in the last fiscal year, almost 1,000 projects have been done in 1,000 locations um, in, in Trinidad, Mr. Speaker. Of course, there's a segment of the program also in Tobago, which is under the the big office House of Assembly. So, Mr. Speaker, with those uh, few words, Again, uh, we, I thank you for this opportunity, and um, we are prepared to engage in a discussion with um, our colleagues. Thank you very much. Thank you, th thank you very much. Honorable members, the question is that the sum of 1,314,830,000 for Head 69, the Ministry of Works and Infrastructure, stand part of the schedule. 
Honourable Members, the sum of one billion three hundred and fourteen million eight hundred and thirty thousand for Head sixty nine, the Ministry of Works and Infrastructure, is comprised of monies proposed for expenditure under the following subheads and items to be found in the draft estimates of recurrent expenditure and the draft estimates of development program. Zero one personal expenditure, one general administration, two highways, three traffic management, four, three. Yes, I recognize the member for Digo Martin West. Under, under, um, under 001, general administration, is the minister aware that the personal expenditure, I, I know that this ministry has been, or should I say I know, is it that there has been some recombination um, between 2011 and now with respect to the, the, the scale of your operation, which would have caused your personal expenditure to move from 102 million to 420 million? Because the estimates for personnel on the zero one is 420 million. As a matter of fact, the revised estimates for 2014 is 514 million. And the first question I want to ask is what has caused the personal expenditure to balloon from 102 million to 514 million in, on, the, on the head of Ministry of Works? Well, it used to be the Ministry of Works and Transport and uh, Drainage also. And as you realize now, transport has been hived off. Right. Drainage has been hived off. Yes. Right. And but, what but, but, but the personal expenditure on the, these documents still remains personal expenditure. Two big hive off took place, transport. The figure, and the figure that you're referring to, 100 and some million, is for what year? Those are the actual figures for 2011. But no, we're dealing with 2013. I know we're not dealing with 2011, but I'm making a reference point. Come, um, Chairman, just on another point. If the member is quoting figures from 2011 or 10 or even 8, could we have the figures? Well, I would have got so these figures. Could... So these figures are available to all of us. But I'm simply saying it is. It is but it because is my it is not before us now, I don't have it, so I can't follow you. That way, okay, well, I'm putting it. Okay, I'm putting it to the minister that the expenditure on the personnel yeah. in 2011 was 102 million. Yes. Yeah. Unless the minister is prepared to say that was not so, but the question I'm putting to the minister is that my reading of the documents over the period is that personal expenditure has grown considerably, and I'm asking the minister whether, in fact, it had to do with any change in the structure of the ministry. And he said that, well, of course, if they're querying that my figure is wrong, then that's another story. Because, um, and in fact, the another, another question I want to put to him, and that is, in 2014, in these documents in front of us, the figure was 514 million. For the 2015 figure, the request is for 420 million. What is causing that decrease? What are we anticipating here? The well, uh, let, me, let, let me say that. I, I will certainly go and look back at the figures, but I don't have the year 2011 that the member is referring to. Um, the overall decrease uh, in, um, in 2015 of 93 million seven hundred forty that is quoted here in the document on page 376 yeah. on the personnel um, will have to do with um, the retroactive payments of salaries, allowances, and wages that um, had to be paid in 2014. In 2014. Okay. So that is what would have brought down the figure. So, Chairman, on that same point, yes, I can understand a reduction in wages because that deals with daily paid workers. But what's the reason for the reduction in salaries, which is monthly paid workers? The Honourable Minister? There was a collective agreement for daily paid, but I'm not aware of a similar thing for monthly paid. 
If you look but at we are basing, we are basing, uh, base, remember the, the 39 million that you are seeing there is a revised estimate. Uh, By January, you will have what is the actual figure yeah. um, expended. If, if you look at but each subhead under 01, general administration, highways, 002, traffic management, etc., there is a reduction in each and department for salaries. Why is that? And it might have been that there, there were certain um, things to be paid in that year that had been accumulated. For monthly paid? It might have been. Can you tell us We'll have to find out. We'll have to go back to the figures and examine the details. I can't, I can't see any explanation for that. So you'll give us the details of that? We'll look at it, yes, surely. Right. Yes. Can go, um, so we go on to zero, zero 002, highways. We go to 003, traffic management. Yes, I recognize the member for Digo Martin West and after the member for Shogunas West. We spend a considerable amount of money on traffic management. But Mr. Chairman, if a stranger comes to Port of Spain and rents a car and tries to get to Point 14, you basically have to do it by air because the signposting and the traffic management in this country is so chaotic. And if you come from south of Point Fortin to go to Arima, it's another story. I'm asking the minister, how are the 18 million in 2013, 20 million in 20, 26 million in 2014, 20 million in 2015, and we're not seeing any improvement in the traffic management of the country. What, 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 I like I'm on, I'm on page 377, item, uh, 003, 030, traffic management. Sorry, the, the, the 003. Salaries and costs are given. Hello, what? 003, traffic management. Yes. yes. Yeah, but, but, but we're on personal expenditure on the, on the last item. So on the vacant post? So I, th I thought you called 003 on the personal expenditure. Yeah. Personal expenditure, 003. Well, that's why I am. Yeah, but which line item are you on? The very last line of that page of 337. You're looking at the totals. Yes, I'm saying, the point I'm making, these are allocations which we are approving for mm -hmm. traffic management. Mm -hmm. And I'm making an observation to you mm -hmm. that notwithstanding these annual expenditure, mm -hmm. we are not seeing any improvement in the traffic management with respect to guidance around the country. Yes. It's chaotic in Chagonas, it's chaotic in Arima, it's chaotic in Point Fortin, and the signposting is poor. Well, I don't agree with you that um, the signposting is poor because we continue, um, we have a continuous um, program where we are improving the, the signage, um, signage in, in the country. Um, in, in fact, we have we done more than that. If you go to um, the areas um, near schools, you will see um, at several um, of those areas, we have zebra crossing and street, uh, zebra crossing that have been established. In fact, for 2014, 47 zebra pedestrian crossing, crossings with flashing amber lights were installed at various locations. And if you want a list of them, I, I have the, the full list um, here, here for you. No, I'm not talking and about that, Mr. Chairman. Mr. 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 Minister, I'm talking about finding your way around the country. What you, what, As, what? And, I, and, I, and I reference it against a stranger entering Arima from the west and trying to drive through Arima. How do you guide yourself through Arima? There's, the, the, in, in the eyes of a stranger, you try to cross Arima and you're literally stuck in the middle of a town with very poor sign posting because you have to turn left, turn right, turn left, turn right, turn and go straight before you know. I might, I might, I might say similarly. Please, that, um, please, uh, let the minister but, respond. But, but you please. recognize that in, in the boroughs and so on is also the responsibility of the, the corporations to also engage in, in signage, and um, and uh, that is something that. Um, we work collaborative, collaboratively with them, but we have been improving um, signage across the country. In fact, we are about to put, our, put up the first set of gantry signs on the... Um, so, what I mean, on the so we can the improve whole, this. Yes, we are, we, are, we are doing that. We are doing that. But, and, and the point I'm making is, 
my final point, my yeah, final question sure. is, is this allocation sufficient to take us to where, where we really should be? This is not the allocation. Yes. This, this matter you're referring to as personal expenditure. Yes, personal expenditure. This is the amount uh, to pay people who are working in the traffic management de department, people who go and they do the analysis, they put up the signs, they paint the roads in white and so on. This is money to pay them and to manage the system. And this is sufficient to do what has to be done? As, as at this point, we would love to have more money. This is not what we ask for. We ask for more money. But like ah, everything that's else, the point I'm trying to get no. To. But everything Did you else, ask for more money. For oh yes, we, if, if you want, if you want um, the, the, the request that we had made, we can supply you with, um, with the requests that were made. But like every ministry, um, we are subject to what is available in the pot. And um, when we got down to discussions um, with the ministry officials at the Ministry of Finance and the Ministry of Planning. We decided um, if this is what is um, available, we are going to prioritize and use our money to the, in, in the best way that we can. All right, I recognize the member for Shigonas West. The chairman. Mr. Minister, under 08. 08? Under 003, 08. Mm -hmm. I see in 2014 an allocation for 500,000, and 2015, same allocation. How many vacant posts do you have in this department? Yeah. I want to do. Yeah, the Honourable Minister. <coughs> I will have to. I will have to find that out for you, Member. I, I cannot give you that uh, okay. that figure at the okay. moment. But I can find and let you know. Okay. All right. I, re I recognise the Member for Diego Martin Notice being just estimates. But if you look at 2014, the revised estimate is more or less what was actually spent. Mm -hmm. Not the original estimate, the revised estimate in 2014. And in each one of these heads, this one, traffic management, the previous one, highways, etc., the actual expenditure on salaries in 2014, significantly more than what is provided for in these estimates. What line are you referring to? Let's look at this particular one, 003, 01, page 377, mm -hmm. revised estimate 1.7 million. Mm -hmm. Your 2015 allocation 1.2. Highways, the previous page, revised estimate, which is the actual expenditure, 10 million. Your 2015 is eight. So in each one of your divisions, departments, your your allocation for 2015 is less than your actual expenditure in 2014. For salaries, your allocations. Your allocation in this fiscal going forward mm -hmm. for salary is less than 2014. Significantly less. Mm -hmm. In some cases, 20 percent less. Mm -hmm. And that might be due to the fact, and we, we can probably look, look at the, um, that we might be subcontracting and outsourcing um, a, a lot of work in the traffic management division. Well, it's not just traffic management. It's in highways, it's 20 percent mm -hmm. less, and so on. It's right through. Mm -hmm. Your salary Newsletter. allocation is 20 percent less, in some cases mm -hmm. more than 20 percent less than your actual expenditure on salaries. Mm -hmm. And as I say again, um, it might be that a number of positions are not being filled and, and uh, work is being contracted no, no, out. No, 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 you're, you're missing my point. I'm not missing your point. If, I, if, if your actual last year is more than your allocation for this year, that has nothing to do with positions being filled. It is actual of last year being more than provision for this year. That's the point I'm making. But, but, How is this possible? But this is still not actual. This is why really revised estimates. Now, if you look at 213, you would have seen in 2013 that figure there would so, have been revised. So, so what's the basis so, for the revised So we go, we're going to see we're going right, to see so what the actual figure is. You are telling me this revised estimate, I should not use that as a No, I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm saying, though, that we've got to wait until the actual figures have been computed to know exactly what is going on here. Because you'll see in 2014, the estimate was um, uh, 1.2. The revised is saying 1.7. We are going to try and find out where is the, where is the difference. And, and All right, we're going on to 04 4 Central Planning Unit, 04, Item 4. 06, mechanical services. Z seven, item seven, men maintenance. Eight, construction. Nine, 12, unemployment relief program. I recognize the member for Laventil West. Chair, sure. um, we get to understand early on that the unemployment relief program would have been um, moved from the Prime Minister's office to the Ministry of Works. Can the minister indicate if the entire, because at one point in time, uh, the program was split into three, if the entire program is now under the Ministry of Works, and can he can uh, break down 
of the various positions be circulated? When you say, I, I'd like to be clear on what you mean by break down the different positions. Uh, you should have an organizational structure. Yes. If that can be circulated. Yes, you can get the organizational structure, and the program is divided into three segments, as, as you correctly said. URP infrastructure, which is under the Ministry of Works. URP agriculture, which is under the Ministry of Food Production. And URP social, which is under the Ministry of the People. That continues to be. So the portion that has been moved from the Prime Minister's office is um, the entire URP program. Um, and we administer it through the Ministry of, of Works. The administrative part of yes. it? Yes. So I can give you the, the, the structure um, as you, you yes, do want to. So, Chairman, I'm going to ask the same question. Hopefully, I won't get the same answer. Mechanical services, maintenance, construction, and employment relief program. The allocation for this year for salaries is significantly less than what you spent last year. Why is that? In each one. Remember for the Guamante Notice? 378, 379, 378, 376, 007, 008, 012, and I'm dealing with salaries and not wages. Eh? The salaries are monthly paid officers. Can I, just a second. No, it's not. Not salaries. Not salaries. No, no, no. That's that. We're not talking 2013. Um, you know, 2015. Remember, yes, please. If you remember earlier, and I talked about the allocations that were to be made um, for back pay and son in each of these categories. Let's, uh, let's not waste time. So, no, I know there was back pay. So the, the, therefore, the therefore you'll find last year's estimates are going to be higher no, than this year's estimate no. because the provisions are made in, in those figures. Therefore, it is very simple logic that those are going to be higher figures than this year. Minister, you are telling me there was back pay to public servants last year, monthly paid employees? There were several, there were several um, payments to be that? made. As I, I indicated already, the question you ask about the salaries and, and so on, I'm going to um, research it and get back, get back oh, to you. All right, not talking about all right cool. All right, let's, 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 move, let's move on. Listen. Um, he, he the, to me, the, the minister has said that he will research that matter and get back to your good self and the committee. So we are now going to zero two goods and services. Item one, general administration. Item two, highways. Item three, are you on highways? Yes, yes, Mr. Chair. Yes, I recognize Aruka Maloney and then what member page, what page, West. Mr. Speaker? That is um, page 381. Yes. Mm -hmm. page, page 381. Yes. And Mr. And Mr. Chair, on the. And what, and what sub item? Sub item 28. Sub item 28. Could the minister provide a breakdown of the contracted services for us, please? Sure. And the cost of each. All sure. right. Okay, that will be provided before I recognize Shagonas West, then Dego Martin. Mr. Chairman, I was East. asking on 02, goods and services, promotions, publicity, and printing. Which what that? Which, which page? Could you tell us what? Page? 381. 381. What sub item? 0162. 0162. Yes, there's a provision of $1 million. I'm asking what that involves. That involves uh, the uh, printing of advertisements in the newspapers and the regular advertising we also do on the radio and so on to deal with um, informing the public about developments in the ministry or alerting them to, um, to traffic uh, congestions or or work that we might have going on in the highways or other parts of the country. You would recognize, though, over the last uh, three months, we have developed a, a system, an app called WISE, and um, approximately 600 plus persons have now logged on to that app, and they are getting that information um, as it happens on, on the app. So we have moved into, into that technology, in addition to the um, with Facebook that we have and, and our site and so on. Yes, um, 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 we do. All right, we go on to zero, 
Oh, okay, remember for Sugar um, Tego Martin Notice? I tell you, this yes, is Tego Martin Notice? Yes. I'm still trying to get over the fact yes, that you said Yes, yes, I know. I, let us not get here. Let us Page move on. Page 81. It is called what? The WI says 28. Is this for the districts? What's that? Page 381. Mm. Page 381. I, sub item 28, mm -hmm. other contracted services, mm -hmm. $150 million allocation. That's throughout the country. Is this for the district? Throughout the country, wherever work, work is, 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 has to be done, we, we have contracted services. I'm asking a specific I will question. provide the total list, and you'll see it by district. You'll see the breakdown That's by district. Thank you very much. You will see it breakdown by district. All right, let's go. Item three, traffic management. Item four, central planning unit. Item six, um, item, yes, I recognize the member for the Gumata Northeast. Yes, Mr. Chairman, 0328, what's Zero. that for? Zero. Which page, page? Which page again? Just advise us again. Member for the Gumata Northeast, which page? 382, 0328, other contracted Zero services, three. 4 million for 2015. Traffic management. Honorable Minister, zero three. Uh, uh, you're referring to the four million under other contracted services. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, again, other contracted services, um, well, things have to be done under traffic management. What you, is you have, that? Uh, well, you, I'll give you the list. It's a Do whole you know? long list. And you don't know. Do you know? Yes, I know. It consists of marking of roadways. It might consist of fixing um, roads uh, where landslips have developed. It might consist of patching and roads. You said, yeah, and you said you'll provide a list. I recognize the member for Laventil West. Does the traffic traffic light maintenance also? And then the member. Um, yes, right. The member for Laventil West. Aruka traffic wardens. Later and then after the member for traffic wardens fall under this um, item. The in West. No. Under which item, may I ask? I'm not seeing it anywhere. Sorry? Aruka Maloney, in the meantime? Uh, Mr. Chair, I, to, the, um, to the minister, does the painting of speed humps con, come under sub-item 28 zero other contracted services? Yes. Because I'm, I'm asking, because since 2010, I've been asking, writing, pleading to get speed humps painted in the constituency of Aruka Maloney, sir. Right, speed hums for the Maloney area. Constituency of Aruka Maloney. No, 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 that, that's the question? Yes. We've been pleading, begging. We send them a list of all these speed hums in the constituency. We did our own survey, and up to now, none of them have been painted. Oh, the, 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 the Honorable Minister, you want to respond to that? Mr. Speaker, it's a legitimate request the member is making, and um, I'll pass, pass on the information to our traffic department. I, re I recognize the member for the Go Martin West. Mr. Chairman, with respect to page 381 of the highway 28, I would like the minister to provide us with a, a list of the contractors who were hired. Which, 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 with respect to the 2014 expenditure. Yes, page sub 28, other sub contracted 20. services. Yes, he said he will pro provide us with a list. Yeah, right. uh, under other contracted services? Yes. yes. The contractors who have been hired for this and, and the, um, the, the, the sum of each contract yes. and right. the time. Mr. Speaker, we will provide it by the district. We will provide the amount the contract was for. We will also, I think there's a description in the document that yeah. I have of the, the kind done. of work that was to be done. Good. And um, I believe also the, the, the amount is there. And the name of the contractor is there. But one question I'd like to ask. How are these contractors selected before they're hired? That what, what's the they process have to be pre-qualified. And the contractors are normally pre-qualified in relation to the amount of work they can do. I am advised by the officers at the ministry that they will visit um, these contractors also to ensure that if they claim they have equipment, that they, they, the equipment can be demonstrated. So, for example, um, if, if Namalco, way down in Point Forward, tells you, I can um, do work that involves excavators, 
and he says he has 20 excavators, you may want to make a site visit to ensure that he has 20 excavators. Because in that way also, you'd then be able to qualify them for different levels of jobs. So some might be able to do work below a million dollars, small contractors, or 500,000. Some might be able to do 10 million above, and some might and, and so you'd have large contractors. So that kind of pre-qualification um, exercise takes place. And then, in terms of the jobs itself, we have a tendering process that is strictly followed. Is, is the minister aware of allegations of favoritism with respect to the award this of contracts? This is contract. a question based on the estimates. With respect to the procedure. Let, let, Mr. Chairman, let, again, let, uh, I want let's to make deal with goods and now. services. We're going on the mechanical services. What the allegation in Lassau? Well, well um, please, please, well, let us not get that. there, please. This is not for that. Yeah, We're going um, goods and services, mechanical services. I recognize the member for Shikonos West. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can the minister supply subsequently? The full, under, under 43. Zero, under what? Zero, 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 six. What, what page again? Um, 283. 283? 383? 0063. Right. Security. Like a, a list of the firms, please. The, the honorable member is asking whether which firms or organizations are involved in the provision of security, and whether you could provide a listing, or if you could provide it now. I'll provide a listing, but the, the main firm that is around um, the ministry is, in fact, MTS. <laughs> um, I, rec I recognize Aruka Maloney. OK, let's, OK, we go on to item seven, maintenance, eight, construction, nine, environmental health and safety unit. I recognize the member for the Gumate Northeast, and Aruka Maloney. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Page 385-009, environmental health, 16, contract employment. Two questions. I see you have an increase in that allocation from 4.2 million to 5 million for contract employment. What's the reason for the increase? That's question one. Yes. You, are you following, uh, Honorable Minister? Yes, I'm following. All right. Sorry? The Environmental Health and Safety Unit, I was trying to find a document here, their um, staffing is paid under contract employment in the main. Yes, yes. And um, we are strengthening, in fact, our environmental health and safety, um, especially in view of the increased amount of projects that we are doing. As I showed you, this has been a record year in terms of um, the number of projects, and I'm told that um, the number of projects done this year exceeded any year by between 33 and uh, 40 percent. Okay. Could you give us a breakdown of the employees that are hired under this head? That's, that's possible. OK, fine. All right, we go on to item 10. The member for Faisabad. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Recently, uh, it will come part under different headings. The ministry indicated an intake of young professionals. Can you um, advise us how is that going to proceed and the numbers and the areas? Young professional under what item? It's under a number of different headings for, for uh, where the increase in funds are. Contract employment. Don't try that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, they Under contract it's, employment. Yeah, OK, I'll ask the honorable minister. Mr. Speaker, yeah. we recognize very early in the Ministry of Works and Infrastructure that, um, that we needed to ensure that we had a sustainable ministry when it came to human resource development and personnel into the future. And uh, what we have done is that we have developed something called a mentoring, a mentorship program in the ministry. In this mentorship program, we are currently involved in uh, interviewing, I believe, over 300 applicants for 50 positions um, where these people will be mentored by the existing um, persons in different divisions, including the heads of divisions. So they can then um, grow in the organization and be able to take over positions in the future. During the summer vacation, we also took on um, persons, but these people we take on three-year contracts, 50. They, uh, in, during the summer vacation, in the URP program, uh, 30 second-year graduates of UTT were taken on in, um, in a summer internship program. And uh, Mr. Speaker, it was very encouraging to see them design pavilions, design landslips, um, walls, sorry, where landslips had occurred and so on. And um, that was part of the learning opportunity. Because in the URP program, which we are transforming, we also have to bring in a higher caliber of person. 
and we are also doing that in order to attract them. So we have been working um, very hard in order to bring new people into the ministry and people of a, a higher caliber in order to ensure sustainability and better quality. Okay, I have 10 traffic warden unit. No, Mr. Yes, the, the member for the Gumate, um, Shagonas Dr. West. Mr. Mr. Chairman, 010. One six. Uh, there's an increase of 13 million for traffic wardens. Is that an increase for Is additional it? traffic wardens? And if yes, where, 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 where did you want? Page and number. You, you want to give us the page again? Page 386. Right. Page 386. And what is the sub item? 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. The sub item is 16. Mm. Yes. Mr. Speaker, as you know, we recently recruited another 85 uh, traffic wardens, and just before that we had recruited 100. As I said, we're up to about 300, 337 traffic wardens now um, in, the, in the country, and uh, we are about to engage in another recruitment exercise uh, this year, and they'll be in two batches, hoping to get another 200 traffic wardens in, the, um, in, in this coming year. Are the new ones deployed to new areas, or are they the same areas? We, we are deploying them to new areas, and we're trying to um, recruit them from several areas so that they do not have to travel far out of their areas to work. Um, and the reason for this is that we also believe that if you recruit a traffic warden from their own areas, they have, they're more ecran with the traffic conditions in the area, they're more ecran with the people in the area, and they're more likely to get a, a better response and to give you better information in developing and managing the, the, the traffic flows. Member for I, I, Minister, can you share with me um, in, on that same head, um, 1010, with respect to the, the 16, what is the impact this program is having on the, um, on the, on the elevation of traffic? And well, yeah, yeah um, you, you heard him? Yeah. Yes. Yes. And then we'll go to Lamontel West. And then Aruka. Yeah. Uh, let me just tell you that as of August 2014, and from the, from the inception of um, the traffic warden program, 9,495 tickets for various offenses have been issued at a cost of $8.9 million uh, from the traffic wardens. What is interesting is that the member, member proposal to increase, to increase the fine member by 50 percent. Member for Laventon East, Mova, let us conduct ourselves properly, no man. Please. Every member has a right to ask questions here. And this is a democracy. Let, let us have patience. Please, continue, continue on. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, I, I want to say that in, and also add that the proposal of the Minister of Finance to increase the fines by 50% um, will be something very important to the traffic warden unit. Um, because as you know, if there are not strong consequences, people don't follow the law. Um, to answer specifically whether it has improved um, the flow of traffic, I would say yes. It has done quite a lot to improve the flow of traffic. If I'm a judge by my own constituency, where there is to be tremendous pileups um, on morning, getting in and out of Petrotrin, and on evenings, that has helped. And the traffic wardens not only assist with the regular traffic, but there are events in the country when the traffic wardens are requested. And we make provisions for that so that um, you may have a built-up area where you may need traffic wardens and a provision is, is made to accommodate such um, public Thank you function. very much. Point of clarification, and then Aruka point of Maloney. clarification Chairman, please, a point of clarification. Yesterday, when I asked for an opinion, I was told that this finance committee cannot ask for opinions from ministers. Is it now no, you're asking that for we the can ask for opinions? No, no, that wasn't an opinion. Out of order. Continue, Lavendel La 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 West, please. With respect to item 16, can the minister circulate an organizational structure with respect to that particular unit? The traffic warden unit? Yes, please. Sure. With respect to item 17, right. training. The minister made mention that um, he, he intends to move the traffic wardens from uh, 337 to some 700. Yes, but yet still we are seeing... That's the approved, approved number by cabinet. But we are seeing a, uh, an, a decrease in terms of training. Will those traffic wardens be trained, those new ones? Yes. 
And they go through, it's very interesting that you asked so, that question. They go through a very rigorous training, and the, and the so, training is so, so why the, the it, it's done by members of, of the police service. This will, this will reflect um, our, our intake, what we need for the intake. All right, I recognize Aruka Maloney. Yes, Mr. Chair, what I would like to find out is whether a comprehensive assessment has been done with reference to the deployment of the traffic wardens, particularly since some areas they are more challenged than others with reference to traffic management. And I heard the minister saying that traffic, manage, um, traffic wardens are actually being placed in communities mm -hmm. that they reside in. Mm -hmm. But is, the, is that justifiable? Yes, the director of highways, uh, Mr. Raja Ganesh, is in a constantly is in a process of reviewing um, the traffic wardens, the requirements uh, where, tra the, where traffic wardens are required, and at the moment, for example, we are we are looking again at uh, Tanapuna, we are looking at Arima, we are looking at Sangri Grandi also, which has come into the um, picture, and uh, we are looking at Chaguanas where we need more traffic wardens. Um, we are also now looking at uh, point 14 because we have had some requests from the police in, in the point 14 area um, to add traffic wardens to assist in the traffic on mornings, especially in the center of, uh, of the borough of um, point 14. So it's a, a continuous assessment exercise, exercise in which both the head of the traffic warden division and that team together with the director of highways are involved. All right, we go to item 11, programming. Um, yes, you remember for the Martin notice? No, for the benefit of those opposite who are not listening. I'm on page 387, <laughs> item 011, <laughs> subhead 16. Right. I don't understand how this unit can function without any staff because you have zero expenditure in 2014 for contract employment. Could you please explain? This is a new unit. And uh, it is in the process of being set up, and uh, at this, the, the process of recruitment and so on is on the way. Okay, let's I, let's go on to um, item eleven: program monitoring and evaluation unit. That's item that's twelve: unemployment relief program. We go on to subhead three: minor equipment purchases. Okay. Item one: general administration. Yes, I recognize the member for Digo Martin um, West. Under your IP, Mr. Speaker. Yes. Uh, and this is with respect to the hmm. small budgetary items. The small? Four million. Your IP is a very large budget. But this particular head, 012, deals with staffing. Yeah? Yes. yes. This deal with the public servants. Remember, you have the public, yeah, the public servants. Servant staff, yeah, some yeah the public servant staff, yes. Yes, and the, the point I'm getting to is this. I'm aware that um, a series of small contracts are issued by the URP. Yes. Very small contracts. Most of them, for all of them, under half a million dollars. Yes. Approximating 300,000, 400,000, but a series of those contracts. 225 to 275. And you did mention a while ago that there are 1,000 projects, yes. something like that. So 1,000 by 300 is a lot of money. Yes. In fact, recently, I have had sight of a series of those contracts, all of which are below half a million dollars. Yes. And when I tallied the, the, the total, it was $130 million in contracts yes. awarded in that way. Mm -hmm. The question I would like to ask mm -hmm. the minister is what is the system mm -hmm. that is in place in the ministry mm -hmm. to provide proper accountability and mm -hmm. transparency mm -hmm. for the expenditure of mm -hmm. $130 million in mm -hmm. contracts, all of which are under half a million dollars, mm -hmm. which means it appears to me that they would have fallen under the limit of the permanent secretary. So is it the permanent secretary who is selecting these contractors if not, who is? And secondly, are these contractors subject to the payment of VAT and health surcharge and so on? And I would like an explanation yeah. of the minister. Yeah, the honorable minister. Yeah. The, these, these contractors have to be registered um, with the have been limited liability, or some of them might be sole traders, but they've got to be registered um, legally. The tenders are done by inviting a minimum of three 
contractors to bid on, on each one of these jobs. And uh, that, those tenders are evaluated by a tenders evaluation committee at the, uh, minist min at the URP program um, involving the public servants. And uh, they, they then award the tenders. It comes to the uh, permanent secretary who then issues um, a letter of award for the contract. In the case of URP, as you recognize, they don't get advance payments. So the, the, they have to finish their jobs, and then the jobs are audited. And when the jobs are audited and the satisfaction jobs have been completed, only then um, are they paid uh, for the work. In addition to that level of auditing, spot auditing is also done um, on jobs. So that the audit, audit committee goes out there and audits jobs in order to ensure that um, they are done, done properly before payments, payments are made. This year, we have had a total of 603 um, community contractors who have worked on the projects of the ERP. What is the total figure that the ministry utilized with respect to the 2014 ERP budget for construction by contractors? M Mr. Speaker, if I may, as at the 9th of September 2014, the value of um, work done um, I, I, I read it out for you. Checks issued 545, amounting to 123 million 944,000. The invoices in the accounts department and in the engineering apart, department, which means work completed but being um, audited for payment, 34.34 million 763,000. And then jobs completed and invoices to submit. Uh, 29 million 624,000 jobs in progress, 52 million 354,000. Um, that means to say that you have to add 123 million 944 to 34,763 and 81,979, and therefore that will give you the figure that um, will be utilized um, for this particular year. There are other jobs um, where the contracts have been delivered but work has not started, and I'm not counting those there. So we are looking at 115, 200, and about 37, 38 million dollars. What is this magical figure that always falls below half a million dollars, where there are instances where one drain or one trace would have phase one, sure. phase two, phase three, and all of it go to the same contractor? Is it that we are breaking up contracts so as to let it fall below the level of a particular authority? Well, it might be that you have in one area, let's say, a box drain. It's a very long box drain. So that you, you, you want to give it to different people. Sometimes one person might get phase one and phase two, another person might get phase three and phase four. But it's not very regular that you have so many phases in a, in a particular um, project. But you accommodate as many um, of the community contractors as, as is possible. All right, I recognize the member for Lavendale East Mover. Minister, I would like to, um, coming out of the conversation concerning small contracts, I would like to know, to get a list of the contracts, the small contracts that were issued in the constituency of Lavantil East Mover and Lavantil West, please. The, 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 the Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, it's going to take me more than five minutes to, to, to read out uh, to read, but, but, but I just want to tell you, Mr. Speaker, in, Port, in the region which is called Port of Spain, Region 2, for the fiscal year 2013-14, thus far, 39 projects have been done in that area, which will include the, 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 your, your area. But you have to add into that Samoa Lavantil, Region 3, where you have some overlap um, in your constituency. And in Samoa Lavantil, another... Another 65 projects have been done. So when you add 65, and how much did I say? 59. Um, 65 and, and 39. 39, or over 100 projects have been done in um, Region 2 and Region 3 wow. in that particular area. And I can give you the list and give you the names of all, all right, the All right, you'll provide the list. I recognize Aruka Maloney. Aruka Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I would like to get the same information for the constituency of Aruka Maloney. Okay, because, you'll get that information. Of the What's the library? That, and you'd like to get from the bridge? Is operating. 
All right, let's go on to item subhead three, minor equipment purchases. Item one, general administration. Item two, highways. Item three, traffic management. Item four, central planning unit. Item six, mechanical services. Item seven, maintenance. Item eight, construction. Item nine, environmental health and safety unit. Item 10, traffic warden unit. Item 11, program monitoring and evaluation unit. Item 12, unemployment relief program. We go on to 04 subhead, current transfer and subsidies. Item 5, nonprofit institution. I recognize the member for the Gumate Notice. 04 390, page 391, 005. Yes. We have 449,640,000. What is that for? Page 391. 04, transfers and subsidies, non-profit institutions, $449 million. What's that for? No, no you need total here. Yeah, what's the total here? Is that total here? That's the total figure here, you know, remember? For the Gumate Northeast, I thought you were dealing with individual Sub items. Sub okay, all right. Well, okay, let's deal with individual items then. Sub okay. Ninety-two zero one transfers to state enterprises. Right. One five repayment of one point five billion. No, we, we we haven't gone to state enterprises yet. You you are going ahead of us. So let's deal with um. Let's let's move on no, to item same, seven. That's the same. Or, or or would you want um. Member for Shagornos West. Anything on non-profit institutions? Item 702. Right. I, item 7, households. Would you want to um, raise a question on the households? Yes. Yes. Uh, no, I'm the one, zero 09. I'm with him. Okay. The other one is item 9, other transfers. I recognize the member for Shagornos West. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mr. Minister, I see in 2013, Agua Santa had 1.26 million allocation. I, I, and hear me well, I'm aware that in 2013 that um, Agua Santa was due for closure. I see now it's $6 million allocated for it in 2015. Has the policy changed? And if so, why? Well, you do not, you do not take a very worthwhile asset and simply mothball it, as it were. When I came into the ministry, I asked about Agua Santa, and I recognized that it could be a highly effective um, unit in terms of the work that the ministry has to do, especially with regard to the patching program of, of the ministry, and to make active, because I think it was also one of your, your um, ideas that we should have an effective um, pothole patching program across the country. And I'm very um, happy to advise that the, the plant is up and running and that we are using material right now from it to patch um, various parts of the country because I'm reintroducing um, a pothole patching unit across the country. I like the word what? reintroducing. Sorry? I like the word reintroducing. Yeah. Yes, I hear. Um, we go on now on the... On Item 01. No, no, we haven't reached we haven't reached zero one one yet. We are under other transfers item nine. Um, any any items any matter under item nine? If not, I go to item eleven transfers. You are asking for. I asked before you. All right. Well, I recognize the Gumate notice and then right. the member for Kani East. Two items I'm noticing. Well, several down at the bottom. Nibdek repayment of one point five fixed rate bonds for pure. There are three items, 11, 13, 14, and then NIDCO repayment of 1.5 billion loan for Solomon Ho Choi Highway. Let me start with the 15. Is that the only loan for that Solomon Ho Choi Highway project, 1.5 billion? The, this is a loan that, uh, that is about to be taken, and what we have made here is a provision for repayment um, this, this year, but the loan has not been drawn down yet. Would that be the only loan for that project? If it were the only loan? Yes. We have to find ways and means of financing the project. And, and, and we will look, into, look at, at all our options. Maybe we can finance it out of um, uh, certain assets we have, or we probably go for, for loans and, and finance it. You're not answering me, you know. You have a $7.5 billion mm -hmm. project. 
I see a financing item of 1.5 billion. Mm -hmm. That leaves 6 billion. Is this 1.5 the only loan? Company? Well, it doesn't leave 6 billion. It doesn't leave 6 billion because we have already paid certain amounts of money on, on the project. As you go forward. As we go forward, if there is a necessity to, to get another loan, we'll go and get another loan to finance the project. The, how has this project been financed? Using loan funds or consolidated fund money directly from the Treasury? Part of it was consolidated, and as you know, this is the first loan that's coming. How much money has been taken from the consolidated fund as opposed to loan financing for this project? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, Mr. Chairman, the, we, to date, total payments made on the project is $3.16 billion of the $7.2 billion. And of that, how So much this is, includes, yeah. this includes fees to the OS, to ACOM, also land acquisition fees. And let me say that over 315 properties have been properly acquired by private treaty negotiations. Um, community outreach, management fees, uh, contingencies. In fact, 342 persons have been settled for, for, for their properties. Um, most of this money, that, as far as I am advised, is not, is not loan money. So that came straight from the Treasury? Yeah. Could you, since you have brought it up, I wasn't going to ask you, but you brought it up. Yes. Could we get the names, of what? locations, descriptions, and amounts paid for those properties that you just spoke about that were acquired. Okay. Right. Mr. Speaker, Mr. I, I Chairman, I, I think I want to answer that question. Mr. Chairman, I think that one has to be very careful how one deals with matters um, involving people's personal property what about and personal assets. Personal and this is, this, is, this is, while this is a matter um, is public involving money. public funds, at the, at the same time, Mr. Speaker, we have to be careful that we what? protect the security no, interests no, no, of, of, no, of people. Uh, but I, 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 am, I am not averse to making it available for viewing by the, by the, by the minister, if he, by the member, if he wishes. No, but Mr. Ch yes. Mr. Chairman. I had another question. Oh, you have other questions, yes, Chairman? Yes, yes. No. I another question. Mr. Speaker, I want to make it clear that I'm not denying a request. I'm saying I'm talking about the process by which, by which this is done and legal advice. Yes, be, before. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Be, just um, let me no, no, no. I want to ask. Member for Tingo Martin West, is it related? On the, the matter before the Minister at this moment. Right. Mr. Speaker, I am quite scandalized to hear the Minister saying that land acquisition is a matter for care and our to be kept away from public view. No, no, Mr. Speaker, land up, land Mr. Speaker I, as far as I'm aware, he right, just... He, he, wants, he wants to clarify. No, Mr. Speaker, I'm I, talking I, I, to you, Mr. Speaker. And yeah. after I'm finished, I will ask you okay. if you can. So, My understanding, we're dealing with land acquisition for this highway. doesn't matter who the owner is. My understanding was that land acquisition, as a matter of fact, usually comes before the parliament by way of motion. So you know who you're buying it from, what you're buying, and for what purpose. Now the minister is telling us, with respect to this highway, he has legal advice that the land acquisition associated with that highway should not be careful. No, 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 no. No, you no, didn't, no, say, no, didn't no. say you had legal advice. I didn't say that at all, Mr. Yeah, Speaker. Yeah, yeah. I didn't say that at all. What did he say? Mr. Speaker, all I said, that I, I, I want to be cautious of how people's business is brought, is brought into the public. Not but I'm, and I'm not, Mr. Okay, Speaker, I made it clear, and I'll make it clear what? again, and I'll repeat it again. I have no problems with um, providing the information to um, the members. I have no problem providing so the information what, what to the, the members. Wait, 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 let me just say that, let Member, me also. Look, I think the minister has answered the question to the best of his ability. And I recognize the member for for Kani East. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Right? Mr. Chair. Um, we, we, we can't badger. We, we can't badger. We can't badger. Zero one um, one. Member for yeah. Kani East, please. Zero one one, sub item zero seven. Uh, repayment of Trinidad Rapid Rail Transit System. What? What? I see you have here that you have to pay 58 million estimate for 2015, and you paid 97 million for 2014, and you paid 101 million for 2013. Could you tell us then how much is left balance to be paid and how much was paid already for the rapid rail? Yeah, the, the Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, um, 
as you know, th this is a project that costs near no, 500 no, million no. Um, dollars plus. And as you see, we are paying this year $58,716,000. In fact, uh, Mr. Speaker, um, the, reality is, the reality is that uh, we still have monies to pay um, even in the following year on this rapid rail, um, rapid rail project. One more question, and you can finish with me. Zero one one zero four. Term loan facility for four, four new fast ferries. Does this include the MVCU? Please uh, let us not get. But I'll leave it up to the minister to respond to that. Mr. Speaker, um, I have to check that. I, I don't know what. All right, you have to but check that. I recognise the member for the Gumate North East and then the member for Opuch East. I had raised questions which are you're trying to run away from it. Yeah, I recognise the member for the Gumate North East. Yes, zero one one. Please, 11, please, members, please. 011, sub item 11, 13, 14. Mm -hmm. Do any of these loans provide the funding or provided the funding for Pure in 2014? And will any of them provide the funding for Pure in 2015? The Honorable Minister. As you know, these loans um, were taken in different years and they provide money for, for Pure to do um, to execute projects. And part of, we still have part of this money available to do work um, in this year. And um, there's another loan which we um, intend to draw down, amounting to about $900 million, which will help us to continue work in 2015 and beyond. All right, so that's... I recognize the member oh, Mr. for... Chairman. Yes. Yes. Yes, Mr. yes Chairman, continue, I, member I for the... I asked him right? whether any of these loan funds were used to finance Pure in 2014 on whether they will be used for 2015. I'm assuming that he said some of it was, was used for it. He also said there's a new loan for 2015. Could the minister- That hasn't us, been drawn down as Fine. Yet. Could the minister, since these loan funds, or some of them, were used for Pure in 2014, could we get a list of all the projects Pure did in 2014, please? That's the, no problem, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Right. Speaker, in fact, I would just let you know, and let, as a summary, that 778 projects were done by Pure the in the last fiscal year. All right, list. I recognize the member for the yes, Portuguese. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I want to go back to a very bothering matter, 01107. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, through you today, very distinguished minister, Am I to understand that the taxpayers of this country are still paying millions of dollars in 2015 on this rapid rail business? Mr. Speaker, I'm seeing 58 million as an estimate for 2015. I'm seeing a revised estimate for 2014 of 97 million dollars 2014. 58 million dollars in 2015 for a, a project that dates back to 2007 or 8, somewhere there. And... Yeah, you know, I, we, we oh, God, man, you can't, you, you can't do that, man. Yeah. Mrs. All right. Mrs. Speaker, yes, no, 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 we are not going there. He has withdrawn. He has withdrawn. Yeah, yeah, and, and don't use these guys. Um, listen, M member for Lavantil East, I can take care of myself. Um, member, you use a term, just withdraw it for me. Speaker, I withdraw it. Yes, and, and let us not get into personalization. Please, con con continue, honorable member for Oboche East. Speaker, I really don't want to upset people by I asking know, about the I know, rail. I know, let um, us deal I know. I want to get issue. back to this rapidly. Let us deal with the issue. I am asking the minister a simple question. Right. And he has his technical people here. In, in 2015, 58 million dollars is set aside to pay for a rapid rail. Is this the same rapid rail, Mr. Speaker? Yes, yes. Uh, is this the same rapid rail project that had a consultancy fee of $485 million of taxpayers' money? The Honourable One, Minister. part two of that yes. question, Mr. Speaker. I want to ask the Minister if he can tell us now or probably submit to the committee in writing how much more money the taxpayers have to pay and until what year, whether it's 2018, 2025, how much more million of dollars of taxpayers' money would be required to complete payment 
for this rapid rail transit system that was initiated prior to 2010? Right, I ask two simple questions. Yes, I, I am the Minister of Works and the Minister of Works of in Infrastructure. Mr. Speaker, it is the same rapid rail project. Please, please. It is, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. You, Speaker, you, you, you. yes, I confirm. Please. That 58 million 716,000 has been set aside. Come, 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 come. <laughs> Let, let, let us cool it. Yes. Yes, Ma Mr. Speaker. Yes. That 58 One million. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Several yes. 16,000 has been yeah, set aside. I just want to ask something on the question. And that I will provide the information as to what is the balance that has to be paid uh, All after right. this. Year. I think we have exhausted. No, Mr. 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 Chairman, just one yes. part. I'm in shock. Yes. Could the minister indicate in detail exactly what was requested and what was paid for with those idle sums? Okay. And, whether, and, and whether, in fact, the, those, that assignment was funded by loan funds, and whether, in fact, any of these numbers mentioned are in relation to the loan being paid off. I recognize the member for Shagonas West. I just want to remind the, the minister, Mr. Chairman, I heard Labrie call and also point forty, but Shagonas West also wants to know, under URP infrastructure, the number of contracts that were issued at Shagonas West the name of the contractors and the amount for each one. Mr. Chairman, under URP infrastructure, may I ask a question? Yes, under URP yes, Diego Martin West would require that too. Yes, I, I recognize the member for St. Joseph. Thank you. Uh, and Minister then point four ten. And then the member for Sao Bartaria. Thank you. Minister, under URP infrastructure, is it possible to uh, tell the Finance Committee the policy for starting projects in the constituency of St. Joseph. Where, 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 where are you? I Which? am just asking a general question. No, you cannot do that out of order right, right. now. Continue, no please. Mr. Speaker. Chair, uh, I'd like to go back. Wait, wait, wait. No, you, no, I'm not taking any response. You, um, um, go Chair, on. I'd like to go back to 15, the $1.5 billion loan. I'd like to know for, um, from whom and the conditionalities attached to that loan. Further, if you said you have expended $3.6 billion already, and this adds another $1.5, brings us up to, I think, uh, 5.1, and if this project is to end next year, where exactly would you find it? There's no provision made for it here, and you, you're saying that this highway would end in 2015, but I'm not seeing the provision for it. Mr. Speaker, yes, ma the $1.5 billion loan is the, now being negotiated, all right? But you have the to provision the is. The payment will be due sometime in this fiscal year, and we are making Based a provision for it. Um, that once we take the loan, certain costs have to be met. So the provision is made. It doesn't mean to say that um, we are going to just take a $1.5 billion and hand it to somebody, but you have to have the money available to make sure that you can continue your project. But, Mr. Speaker, I did not get an opportunity to yes. answer a question from, um, Mr. from Chagonas West when he yes. asked about the number of but projects. No, uh, no, 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 you haven't finished me, but I can't understand. Mr. Speaker, Chaguanas West but he's gone, he's and Chaguanas East fall under Region 12 of the URP. And yeah. I'll provide the, the information for the Honourable Member. But just to tell you, Mr. Speaker, for fiscal 2013 14, 208 projects have been done, Chaguanas West and East. What? No, the, fine, the final question on the transfers and, uh, in, in your name. Yes. And then we're moving on. Uh, Mr. Chairman, on 011. The zero 07. Yes, uh, yes. I, I, I'm, I'm just calculating between um, 20. What's the question? The question is that where is this um, rapid rail transit system located in Trinidad and Tobago? Yeah, but I think you responded. So I wonder where it's located. Let, let, let's go on to sub, sub 09, development program. Item one, pre investment. Item three, economic infrastructure. Item five, multi-sectorial and other services. Infrastructure Development Fund. Chairman. I recognize the member for St. Joseph. Thank you. Then I recognize Diego Martin Central and Lebre in uh, that order. Chairman, and then under, the Martin under the development program, line item 09, 2050, 20, I, I am on the infrastructure development program. Yes, I have sir. Gone that ahead. is where I am on page Good. 188. Yes. Of infrastructure development program. Fund. Yes. I am asking if any of these funds yes. are allocated to restart all of the URP projects in the constituency of St. Joseph, which was stopped 
on November the 5th, 2013, and why should a member of parliament have to resubmit all those URP projects under this development fund, which was started for a by-election and which mysteriously stopped on November the 5th, and when I go to URP, yeah. I am told there are no funds. How then, were their the funds to how then were their funds to start it, and there are no funds now to continue it? Can right. the minister tell me if all those pre-by-election projects is that, will continue? Is that, is that related to this? Oh, this well, is another definitely matter. Definitely, sir. Let, let, let me recognize the member for the Gumatin Central, please. Two things, Mr. Speaker. First of all, uh, I'm requesting the same list for URP with respect to Degoma. I would yes, su that... suggest for all the constituencies on this page. All right, number one. Yes. Secondly, yes, secondly? What, what subhead of URI? You just called several. I just want to be clear. We, what subhead we, of we URI? We are on page one, 118. On development program. We are on the development program under the infrastructure. It begins on page 189 of the development program. No, he has taken note and he will respond to you in a short while. Let us go on to the Martin Central, please. Okay, no, well, my question is on the IDF. So All right. when you get there, I will... No, we are here at the IDF. So could you tell us what your question okay, is? Okay, well, I'm on page 299. 299. 299? Yes, I am on IDF. You want consolidated fund, but uh, 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 that's why I asked, you know. I think. Okay, okay, I, um, I apologize. We're on the development program. Continue, yes. honorable member. Hey, hey. Member for the Gomadin Central, continue. So I can ask my question on the IDF now? No, we, we are but not that, on that I'm this telling yet. you that's okay. where my question Anybody lies. Anybody on the development program? Yes, <laughs> yes I recognize the Gomadin notice. Yes, Mr. Chair, on page 193. Yes, 193. 005. Okay. Multi-sectoral. Come to you just now. Public buildings, 238. Right. right. What, what is the expected time frame for the completion of the restoration of the president's residence? Right. Please. Any further questions, honorable member? Yes, sir. No, not you. The no, member for the Martin <laughs> Northeast. Not on this. The Martin Northeast. Any other further questions? On the idea. Yes, you'll come back to that. Yes, could you answer, honorable minister? Mr. Speaker, as you know, that, um, that building collapsed on the eve of the elections um, <laughs> yes. due to very poor maintenance and management by the former administration. Yes, yes, yes. Mr. Speaker, since then, we have been engaged in a process of oh, yes, um, protecting whatever assets are there to protect in terms of the building because we have been working with the stakeholders, including those who are involved in um, the matter of historical sites and the preservation of historical sites. And one of, the, one of their concerns was whether we are going to restore the building um, as close as possible to its original state. And that is something we have adhered to because we believe that the building is of historical value and should be so restored. Mr. Speaker, several things have been done. Um, several things have been done, Mr. Speaker. One, a temporary roof has been uh, yeah, built. Yeah, but, but Respond, Mr. Speaker. I have five minutes, and I'm responding. Yes, exactly. Yes, five minutes. And Mr. Speaker, temporary yes. roof has been built over yes, the building. Yes, yes, five minutes. A dilapidation survey is is being completed, and as I speak, that report is is at hand. Yes, being done yeah. by Bernard Mackey. Remember for the West Help Bernard. You all please. were there for 40 years, and you caused the building to go into disarray and fall down. Right? I, I, it was I, a shame I, that you had a president in the house. Minister, and house mi minister, minister. Please, please, me me member, member for the Martin West, I'm going to retire members if they continue this way. I know, I know, I know that I am trying to complete, yes, I know, but I'm trying to complete, yeah, I, me members, 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 member for Port of Spain South, I need your cooperation, please. I, I, yes, and member for the Martin West, I need your support. Thank you. Um, Honourable Minister. I but there are a lot of people my singing in this country. Yeah, okay. Continue, Honourable Minister. We expect that the contract um, for the actual work will be uh, awarded by March 2015. Yes. And the, that process is well on the way.
All right, good. I asked him when he expect the restoration. Yeah, has, the construction the was not. The construction. No, Mr. Chairman, he did no, not answer. I, I recognize the member Mr. for Speaker, I'll answer him. West. Did not I'll answer him. Yes. The construction work is expected to take between 18 to 24 months. No, you answer. All right, member for Shigonis West. 191. Number 163. 163. Can the minister advise what is the cost to continually maintain the highway beautification program from Chagorna to Charlieville? Mm -hmm. Honorable Minister. And why there are no cable barriers installed in that area? Yes. Mrs. Mr. Speaker, we are installing new cable barriers. Um, so and the, a contract has been awarded by the Central Tenders Board. Yes. Mr. Speaker, I would like to say something here. The cost of maintaining the cable barriers, I don't have it with me, but I can tell you it's very expensive. And um, it's a good idea, Mr. Speaker, because so far we have had nearly 400 hits on those cable barriers. Uh, and of those 400 hits, cell, please? Um, approximately half of those were prevented from going over the median. So, Mr. Speaker, you cannot quantify even the savings in terms of lives that would have been saved. And it's a very long time, Mr. Speaker, that you would have heard anyone die by a car crossing the medium on that um, Solomon Hochai Highway going south, Mr. Speaker, because of the, of the cable barriers. And it was a very good idea and it ought to be complimented and we are going to continue it. Mr. Speaker, the problem is this. The problem is that, they, that, that, that contractors bid very low on the project. And the Central Tenders Board, of course, continues to, to give out the contractors to the lowest tender without taking into consideration the opinions offered by the Ministry of Works officials, that the contractors who are w contractor who's winning, winning this job all the time is a, is a contractor who does not have the capacity, it seems, to continue to do the maintenance by keeping the inventories that are required. And therefore, I'm saying this publicly because when the public might think that the Ministry of Works cannot get the, the, the job done in terms of maintenance. But um, th these are proprietary systems as I understand it. And the contractor has to provide the maintenance um, for, for the particular cable barrier when it, when it breaks down. And uh, that contractor, I must say, has been negligent. But yet, the, the CTB has not been taking our opinion into consideration in terms of awarding the very contractor the um, jobs at these low prices. Mr. Chairman, my question has not been answered. Uh, oh, uh, okay, well, two more questions on the development program, yeah. Minister. A member for St. Joseph and the Bray, and then we go to infrastructure. I'm on page 191, subheading 15, line item 221, roads and bridges, $15 million estimate for 2015. My direct question to the Honorable Minister, is any of this money allocated to the constituency of St. Joseph to restart URP projects on roads, et cetera, which was stopped right after the by-election of November the 4th. All right, he, he will answer you. Um, the many Mr. member Speaker, for Labrie. Mr. Speaker. For Labrie. Speaker. Okay, the, the, this right, minister, minister operates with a certain philosophy that the interest of a citizen of this country must in no way at all be compromised at any time. And therefore, if there is need to do work to satisfy the needs of citizens in any part of this country, the ministry will respond accordingly in consistent with the budget that the ministry has. Do you remember for Le, um, Le Mr. S Mr. S Mr. Speaker, coming back still at 221, I would like to find out whether or not that elaborated point 14 main road and the quarry to Avian Road is featured in that $9 million that in 2014 or 2015. Where, where, what, what, what's the second one you name? Labre to Point Fortin, uh -huh. particularly. Uh -huh. Labre at this point in time, uh -huh. and Quarry to Erin, mm -hmm. right, main roads. Those two roads yes. are in a deplorable condition mm -hmm. and need yes. urgent attention. Mm -hmm. Mr. Yes. Speaker. Yes, the, the minister, please. The, men, the member parliament for Labre will know that I, I keep responding to his requirements. Recently, for example, he asked that Boyak Terrace be um, rehabilitated and, and paved, and that project is now being done through the URP. Uh, we also did work in Vance River, and we repaved a, 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 a very big section of, of road there, Mr. Speaker. And recently, we commenced um, rehabilitation works um, 
in uh, the area of La Brea, where the, the road continuously folds up. But Mr. Speaker, you know, um, having said that, and the member making his request here, the member uh, made a statement on, on radio uh, this week where he said that we are paving places in Valsin and not dealing with Labre. I want to say that we pave all over this country, and we do not discriminate, Mr. Speaker. And the evidence, the evidence of the work done under my ministry will show that across this country, work is being done, including making up for the rural neglect and rural underdevelopment of infrastructure yeah. that took place yeah. under the Two year. final questions, two final questions. The member for Boston, South, and, South and, South and South. Yeah. Tell that Paro, and we go to infrastructure. I think serious I'm that that the this minister is paving roads all across this country. The minister is well aware because I have been begging this minister about fixing Pleasant Road. In Ples, which we're heading on? Yeah. Roads and bridges, ma'am. Yes, roads and bridges. Roads and bridges. Yes. yes. Pleasant Road. Yes. In John John. St. Paul Street. Clifton Street. Basilon Street, Safaria Hill, um, the whole of East Port of Spain, and he has done nothing. You know what, Mr. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Allow me, please. I allow you to speak. Mr. 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 Chairman, this minister told me until he could get a contractor to go in Pleasant Road. No, he cannot do it because of whatever it is, cover tax or whatever. The point about it is, we are situated, we live here in Trinidad and Tobago. It's a road here in Trinidad and Tobago. Make every effort to get All it right. done. Allow, I have got one road done. Allow, allow, allow the minister to answer. Mr. The Honourable Minister of Works Mr. Speaker, and Infrastructure. The, min, the member parting for Port of Spain South is not being totally um, truthful. Mr. Speaker, I answered a question in the Parliament in which was filed about roads, and I pointed out that we did Basilon uh, Street, and we did St. Paul's. Mr. Speaker, it is a fact, it is a fact, Mr. Speaker, that we have difficulty getting contractors who, wish, who want to go and work in those areas. Mr. Speaker, last year, last year, um, a contractor refused to work in the Belmont Gonzalez area because they went and taxed the contractor and the contractor had to pay $30,000 just to get his equipment back out of there and couldn't start a number of roads in that area. And contractors are refusing to go in and work in those areas because they are afraid of the loss of the equipment. Mr. Speaker, just in, 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 in two, fiscal 2013-14, in Laventel East Morvan, um, under the PURE program, we have spent $9,350,000 um, to pave. Mr. Speaker, between, between when we came Wait. into office and to date, we have spent $28.477 million in that area. Laventil West, Laventil West, this year, Mr. Speaker, please, please. this fiscal year, we spent $10,972,000 um, for a total so far of $36.874 million in Laventil West and Laventil East, Mr. Speaker. In Port of Spain South, Mr. Speaker, we are in Port of Spain South, Mr. Speaker, for fiscal 13-14, we have spent $23,636,000. And for a total no. since we came into office of forty-two million five hundred and fourteen thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars. I recognize the member for Talparo La Hoketa. Yes. All right, the member for La Talparo La Hoketa, last question. You all don't know your constituency. Uh, uh, Mr. Mi Chairman. Minister Order, order. I recognize the member. That's the last question, and we go to infrastructure after that. Mr. Continue. Chairman, this is the respect. Member for, um, please, <laughs> please, please, member, no member, please. You cannot say that. Withdraw that. Mr. Kind of Speaker, yes. My... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Chairman, Mr. I Chairman. recognize the member for La. Yes, continue. Yes, Mr. Chairman, page 191, um, 221, with respect to roads and bridges. Um, this is to the, to the minister. Minister, the Talaparo Bridge. I, I saw your hand, hand long guy. Yeah, the Talaparo Bridge, the Talaparo Bridge, Minister. A bridge which is over 100 year old wooden bridge. It has been replaced right now with a, with a new concrete bridge. Do you, have, do, you have, do you have sufficient funds under this allocation to complete that particular bridge? Because I know it would not be completed in this fiscal year. The second question is why did it take so long after 50 years of independence to build a, to replace the bridge? And the last question, Mr. Speaker, last question. How much, how much bridges have you completed in this year? And how much bridges do you expect in the oh, allocation? No, which, head? We, which head are you on? The same, the same head, the same head, 21, 221, roads right, and bridges. Um, Minister, could you answer that quickly so we can go to infrastructure? Yes, Mr. Speaker, the Talparo uh, Main Road Bridge is 95% complete. 
The only reason the bridge was not completed, Mr. Speaker, was the shortage of bitumen. Now that we have TLA out of um, Lake Asphalt, that bridge will shortly be paved, and uh, they will enjoy the facility of that bridge. Mr. All right, we, we, we go on to the infrastructure. No, we can't we can continue. We, no, 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 no. Infrastructure development. No, 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 no. no. We, are, we, are, we are going to infrastructure. Anybody, anyone for infrastructure? I recognize the member for the Gomate Northeast. Otherwise, I'm going to put the question now. Thank I you. recognize the member for the Gomate Northeast. Thank you. Infrastructure. I have to take charge. Otherwise, we are going to go on and go on. Continue. Member for the Gomate Northeast. Yes, Mr. Speaker. Page 299, item 260 on the head 15, Border Spain, East West Let's Corridor Transportation Project. Minister. Yes. You have trouble with the numbers, you know. Page 299. Mm -hmm. Yes. Item 15. Yes. Yes. Subhead 260. Port of Spain East West Corridor Transportation mm -hmm. Project. You are with me, Minister? Yes. yes. Could you tell me what is the status of the award of the contract for the flyover at the K Donna intersection? Mr. Speaker, the, the Minister. Member of Parliament had raised that question about. Um, in a, in a motion on the adjournment in this parliament um, earlier, earlier this year. Mr. Speaker, I would not like to say anything that will prejudice the outcome of um, the award of that tender. NIDCO tendering committee, what? and NIDCO is proceeding with that. When they are finished with their evaluations and the process, they are going to make a recommendation as they do yeah, to the to uh, Ministry um, of Works and Infrastructure and um, we'll be in a better position to advise the member. But in the meantime, the process um, is continuing and the evaluations um, um, continue apace. Diego Martin Central and Laventil West. Diego Martin Central, Laventil West. Diego Martin Central, I recognize you. Member for Diego Martin Central, thank you. Uh, yes. My question is under subhead 254. 254. Diego Martin Highway, Wendy Fitzwilliam Boulevard to Diego Martin Main Road. Right. I, allow me, please. Please. Yes, allow the member to speak. The revised estimate for 2014 indicates 6.5 million. I'm interested to know what value the citizens got for that 6.5 million. And then 4.5 million is estimated for 2015. I'm interested in knowing exactly what is that going to be funded, mm -hmm. particularly as this mm -hmm is known to be a very controversial prospective project, which is unlikely to be initiated in the near future. I'm saying that as a member of parliament. I have other questions, but I'd like him to address that, and I'll ask my other questions. Yes. Um, firstly, uh, the consultancy was not awarded in 2014, and therefore that money was not utilized. It was viad for other things. But the consultancy will be awarded um, this year, and the consultancy for the 4.5 million will be utilized um, to do the designs. You cannot do a major piece of um, highway work like without proper designs. And the designs will be completed, and that work will be started. All right. Well, I have a follow-up. Before my other questions, are you going to be doing the designs? Fe sorry, feasibility. Uh, feasibility. Oh. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. All right. Feasibility. I have other questions, Mr. Speaker, and I will proceed right before, the, before we have the, the Remember for the Lavender West. No, may I continue with my questions, Mrs. Speaker? Okay, go ahead, continue. 258. Yes, 258. Dueling of Diego Martin Highway from Victoria Gardens to Acton Court. Yes. Uh, this certainly appears to be the highway expansion project. It is. Which we are pleased that has been opened. My question is with very respect Very good, very good. Glad you are pleased. I said it in the budget debate. Why are you okay. carrying on? My question is with respect to the 2015 allocation of $15 million, and I would like to know that what that would entail. Uh, does that include, there's a major issue, the Highways Division is aware of it, with respect to the traffic lights that have been put on this new highway. We're removing traffic lights, uh, Minister, from other highways, and we've put a major traffic light on the Diego Martin Highway. Is there anything in this $15 million that will help us to solve that ongoing challenge. Secondly, does that include the issue of the 15 million, include the issue of a walk over at Franklin Road, which the residents have been 
requesting. So, and then I have one further question on another item after the minister answers. Yeah, we're not coming back, yeah? so better you raise all your questions now. Is uh, uh, you, yeah, yeah, okay. you raise your question. Because we're going. Wanna... Uh, Mr. The, the next question is with respect to sub item yes. 276, this landslip repairs program. I would like a listing of landslips that have been repaired in all areas of Trinidad and Tobago under this program, including Diego Martin Central. I want to take this opportunity to express my dissatisfaction. The Diego Martin Valley has many landslips. The dissatisfaction with the pace of any repairs, um, and I'm seeing funds being allocated. All right. Yeah, I'd like a list. The Honourable so, Minister. So I, yeah, Mr. Speaker. I some answers. Um, there he, a very good question was asked about the traffic light and sun. Mr. Speaker, the, the completion of the Diego Martin extension uh, has to now be supplemented with another project, which is the construction of a vehicular and pedestrian bridge um, that will take care of that traffic light problem. And you will notice on the 258, we have put, um, to be, no, sorry, on the 256, we have put in funding there in order to begin the feasibility and, um, if possible, initial design works of that. And that, that, will, that will take you in the area of where West Mall is. Right. Well, Mr. Speaker, I just want to clarify because I'm aware of that yes. aspect. No, Mr. Time. Speaker is responding to the wrong question. Yes. So I have to clarify I, on behalf of my I, constituents. I, I, that response does not take into account the issue of the traffic lights, which is at the four roads area. So it's two different challenges um, we are addressing. I'm talking about the major traffic lights at the four roads area. Okay. He's talking about at West Mall. So I have to clarify. Um, the Honourable Minister. Um, I'm advised by the Director of Highways that they are studying that problem. And what they are doing is trying to do a, a traffic study there that will allow them to rephase the light. But they are aware of, aware of the situation and, and the problem. It's not included in this 15 million. No, this I, I, I recognize Lavantil West. Well, it doesn't take 15 million to do it, but and I have since, a, I since, had a since question you asked on the about the 15 slip. million, yeah. that is to complete payments on the highway. I'm awaiting an answer on my question on the landslip program, Chairman yeah, of this Lavantil committee. Lavantil West. I recognize Lavantil West. Thank you, Chair. Chairman, I'm awaiting an answer on my question on the yes, landslip. Yes, we will provide you the list. Okay, continue, Lavantil West. Mr. Mr. Speaker, the landslip, you want to answer? Can I give him? You want to give him it now? I give him now. Sorry, go ahead. I tend to forget these things too easily. Mr. Speaker, under the landslip reconstruction program, 486 landslips were identified to be done over a period of five years at a cost of $418 million. Mr. Speaker, this is a new program, by the way. And um, we have started. So in 2014, six landslips were awarded. And uh, right now, we have just tendered and awarded 22 uh, lands, lands. How many in Diego Martin? And we are about to tender um, another set again, Mr. Speaker. All right. I will, I will have to tell you. All right. You, you have to supply with a, a list of those lands. Three short questions. I recognize question. love until West. Three short questions, Mr. Chairman. Uh, 260. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, love until West falls or makes a part of Port of Spain East. Can the minister? Uh, indicate exactly what this Laventil, this, this port of Spain, South, West East, Corridor West Corridor Transportation Project is all about. And while that is so, can he also give a list of the um, projects that would have formed the $10 million road repairs that he made mention of? Yeah. Mr. Speaker, second one be it the Port of Spain North, which is item 277. The Port of Spain Northern Valleys Link Road. Can the Minister also explain what is that project? And under 270, Mr. Speaker, can the Minister also give, the, give a list of all the roads and the amount of money spent on fixing roads in Siparia? Um, Siparia, Siparia Hill. Siparia, okay. yeah. Mr. Speaker, member, member, Mr. Speaker, um, the, the Port of Spain East West Corridor Transportation Project included things like the Uriah Butler Interchange, the Aranguez Overpass. Um, we have also had um, other widening of roads there, the, 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 the St. Joseph River. 
um, which was widened. A, a number of projects, as you see there. Mr. Speaker, by the way, because of that project, we can now effectively put on the electronic boards at um, BTEM, um, just outside the market, the exact number of minutes it will take you to get from the BTEM to the interchange. You can do that now, and that's being done. So commuters see that on a daily basis as they travel there. Mr. Speaker, um, the corridor project will include now the Churchill Roosevelt Highway to St. Joseph River being widened. Mr. Speaker, right um, outside of PTSC, you will see we are widening the bridge there um, so that it'll allow uh, three lanes coming out of Port of Spain, and that will quicken the, the traffic out of Port of Spain. The installation of traffic control and surveillance system within the corridor from Ura Butler Highway to Colville Street, Port of Spain. Mr. Speaker, we, you, we recently announced that uh, we are going to be putting more cameras along the east-west corridor, and particularly the highway, um, up to Piaco and down to Kuva, and that will be monitored by the um, National Transport Traffic Management System we have at the Ministry itself. Mr. Speaker, also, we, are, uh, we have done a pilot survey study using the red light enforcement at Wrightson Road. And uh, you'll be amazed to know how many people break the red lights, they include members of parliament, <laughs> including, uh, including uh, um, police, including the regiment, and so on and so forth. And then we are also about to start a, a project, spot speed enforcement, also on the highways. Um, Mr. Speaker, um, all of these uh, f form part and parcel of the East-West Corridor Transportation Project. Yes, I recognize Labre. Labre, right. Mr. Speaker, um, then Aruka Maloney, 276. Then, then Chagonas West, then you. 276. Thank you, Steve. And after that, we have program. I want to find out from the Honorable yeah. Minister whether or not the landslips in yes. Upper Salazar Trace, yes. Fort Hugh McCarthy Street in Brands River, yes. Upper Sobo Extension, La no, Union and Erin, and Lotten Village, whether they are in that allocation. Um, for 2015. Did the Honourable Minister of Works? Um, Mr. Speaker, let, let me say this. Huh? I will provide the list. But at the same time, some, some landslips have a higher priority than others. If you go on Realize Road right now, Mr. Mr. Speaker, a house valued over a million point five, one point five, has collapsed because of the landslip. Two other houses are threatened in the same way. If you go on to Christian Avenue in Pleasant Park, you'll see that there are 10 houses there. That if we do not put a $9 million wall behind those houses, those 10 houses are going to collapse in, in, in Point of Pier, as we are doing now. So some landslips you have to enter urgently. So if it is in, in the Member of Parliament area in Labre, there's an urgent requirement to go and do work there. Mr. Speaker, I want to give him the assurance that we are going to go in there and do, do the work as is necessary. All right. Aruka Maloney, please. Aruka Maloney. Um, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Page 298, subhead, 298. subhead 003, subitem 003, show of Peace Coastal Cliff Stabilization Works. Mr. S Mr. Chair, there was a $2 million allocation for 2014. I want to know what has accounted for a $22 million um, allocation in, tw in 2015. And if the minister could provide for us a breakdown of the work to be done and the cost of each item, whether a contract was awarded, if it was awarded, who is the contractor? And if he can indicate to us if this is the final or total cost of the project. The Honorable Minister of Works and Infrastructure. No, Mr. S Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in the area where the show of peace is, just to be spe very specific on that one, the original road also that, that led to the show of peace has been washed away by the sea. And the rate of erosion there has been very, very high. Mr. Speaker, I toured with the member for Point 14, and the member Point 14 will tell you that several projects um, are, are being started in, in that area also in terms of um, coastal erosion. In Cedrus and Icacus, we are losing, I'm told by the coastal people, about two, two meters of, of um, shore per year, annually. It's, it's very, very bad. The, the show of peace um, involves the building of 576 meters of um, wall, in addition to the other works that's necessary there, which is bringing a lot of rocks and so on to break the, break the waves um, coming in there. So it's a, a very extensive um, piece of work there. And the, the price here, it might, not, it might be higher than this, because we, we have now completed um, 
the tendering process and the tenders are being evaluated by yes, NITCO yes, for yes. that particular project, plus the one in Manzanilla. I recognize and the member for Shagunas West and, 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 and also Diego Martin Northeast. Um, listen, I, I had a list of all the hands that were up. I am coming. You're, you're coming. Your, your name is here. Your name is here. It's coming. Just exercise some patience. You're coming. Your turn is coming. Yes, I have it here. Your name is here. I recognize the member for Shabonis West, Th thank you, Mr. Chairman. East, and then Carney East. Continue. Member for Shabonis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Minister, Mr. Minister, are you ready? Yes. 258 on page 299. Yes. The Martin Highway. Yes. Have you paid all the persons whose lands you acquired for this highway? Have we paid all these people? Two five eight. No, not all has been completed. I'm advised by Director of Highways. But I'd like to ask you, Mr. Mr. Minister, some of, the, some of them have been owed for more than three years. Yes. The highway has been opened. Can you please pay? My own personal position is very unfair to owe anybody whose lands you have taken for that length of time. Yes. And I will make every effort in the ministry to ensure that these, these matters are resolved. Thank the you. member for the Gomata Notice and then Carnies. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Page 299, item 247. Could we get a list? A breakdown of the projects in 2014 and 2015 on item 247. Similarly, item 275, could we get a breakdown of the expenditure in 2014 and projections for 2015? And on page 300, could you tell us why item 273, the ministry has abandoned the restoration of meal flow? You want to do the last one because you'll provide. You'll because provide that, is, that is under the uh, Ministry There's of nothing National Diversity. And you I, I re recognize the member for Kani East. No, no, no. Kani East, yes. member Chair, of Kani East. Page 298, um, 003. 003. And subheading P from 001 to 008. Yes. I see a lot of shoreline stabilization works have been going um, estimated. I see a revised estimate for 2014, which showed some work, but I see nothing for 2013. Could the minister tell us what has been happening to shoreline stabilization works in so many areas of Trinidad prior to 2014? Mr. Mr. Yes, Mr. Yes. Speaker, Minister. I think that is the most important question. And uh, it is a situation that um, the ministry recognized that um, needed attention. And a coastal unit in the ministry has now been set up. And we recently got um, PMCD from the Ministry of Public Administration, the structure. Oh, very good. And uh, we are now employing people also in that unit. And this is why the work has intensified and been expanded to this, this extent. So um, thank you very much, because it's something that was, that was like prior nothing, to 2013. Nothing and was done prior 2010, to 2010. Very little was done in order to, yeah. to deal with these matters. OK, right. Thanks. Yes, honorable members, the question is that the sum of one billion $314,830,000 for Head 69. The Ministry of Works and Infrastructure stand part of the schedule. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Those against say no. no. I think the ayes have it. The sum of $1,314,830,000 for Head 69. The Ministry of Works and Infrastructure now stands part of the schedule. Honorable members, I want to thank the Honorable Minister and his team for being here.